Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a beautiful and a brand new day. Good morning, Donna King. Good morning, Carla Jo Worth. Oh, it's a gorgeous day here in the Enchanted Forest. Let me just say, <clears throat> it's beautiful. It's sunny. It's cool. It's not humid today. <laughs> the critters are lively out there in the forest, and it's just, it's a gorgeous day. It's another day, another new beginning, another opportunity, isn't it? It really is. So this morning, <clears throat> as we're all gathering, talking about soul and spirit, spirit and soul, and how it speaks to us, for those of you that are out there listening, no matter where you are around Grandmother Earth, you are more than welcome to join us in the chat room. I know that many of you just enjoy being in your home or your workspace or your sacred space, tuning in every Wednesday, and I appreciate each and every one of you tuning in. This morning, we're going to talk about when spirit and soul speak. Hey, Danielle. It's good to see you in the chat room. When spirit and soul speak. And what that means. I think it means different things to different people. Sometimes we forget, I do believe, to take a moment to even listen to the voice of our soul because we're so busy. We're so in a space that we forget that we have spirit, that we have soul. And maybe it's just something that we focus on on Saturday or Sunday when we're in synagogue or temple or ashram or church or outdoors, wherever it happens to be. <clears throat> but we do have a soul, I believe, and we do have a spirit, I believe, as all things have a spirit and a soul. And they speak to us. And for some, perhaps they speak a little more loudly. <laughs> you know, spirit and soul has been talking to me very loudly for 57 years in this lifetime. And I'm certain that in many other lifetimes as well, that this is not a one-off for me. And I believe that part of the reason that I'm here on the earth plane at this time, or at any time, really is to help people to remember spirit and soul. And that our soul, our higher self, call it what you will, is always speaking to us. Our divine intelligence, that small, still voice within, is speaking to us. Creator within us is always speaking to us. And so is every other living thing, seen and unseen. And I believe that that's part of why I'm here. And what my purpose is, here on the earth plane, part of it anyway. Hey, Jessica Clark. Good to have you in the chat room, too. Angie, good to have you in the chat room as well. So how does spirit speak to us? How does our soul speak to us? Well, there are just a variety of ways. Hey, Tara. Good morning, everybody. What is a soul? What is spirit? Spirit, I believe, is that bit of lightning within us that animates the body, the breath of creation, the energy of creation that energizes, animates us. And what is soul? I believe soul is part of the larger soul, the part of the larger heart and mind of creator, of God, of the goddess. And here we are as part and parcel of all of that with this magnificent energy, the breath of creation. Some people call it the Holy Spirit, the spirit within, <clears throat> animating us to do something, to be something, to contribute something. We're alive. And we're alive and we can either be asleep or awake. And I love the idea of myself as helping to wake people up to their own potential to their own understanding of how it all works. Hey, Marianne, good to see you in the chat room this morning. <clears throat> okay, so spirit and soul, I think we can all agree that we are, we're all alive here. We're animated by something. Maybe we don't know specifically what it is. We know that we're connected to a higher source. Some people call that God. Some people call it goddess. Some people call it creator. Some people call it the great spirit, Wakantanka, many names. 
for that. And why is it always speaking to us? Why is that connection always speaking to us? Well, I think it's to help us maneuver life down here because I don't think that our lives are random. I really don't. I believe that every interaction that we have is a holy reaction. Uh, in encounter. Every encounter that we have is a holy and sacred encounter, or it can be. It can be based on the way that we interact. And I'm not saying that life has to be pious and it has to be prudish and all of that kind of a thing. Anybody who knows me knows that I'm neither pious or prudish. <laughs> but what I am saying is that our encounters can be meaningful that our souls interact with one another, that spirit is always speaking to us. And sometimes spirit is speaking to us and soul is speaking to us so that moments can become extraordinary moments or they can become sacred moments or to help guide us to what's next along the growth or the understanding of our soul on this earth plane. Because if we, as I believe anyway, this is just little old me up here in Lowell, Michigan, <laughs> having a moment of thought. I believe that we all came to the earth plane for a purpose and not necessarily a grandiose purpose. We all, we all aren't going to be on center stage, any of that, but just to live a good life and to explore and to have the privilege and the honor of experiencing a human lifetime. As the medicine man said a few moons back, a few years back actually, at Arval Looking Horse's place, he said, do you know how many spirits wish that they could be here on the earth at this time? Have joy. Have laughter. Don't be so pious. Don't be so holy. Have fun. If you wanted to be so holy, <laughs> you should have stayed in spirit. We came here to experience a human lifetime, and there should be joy in that. There are a lot of spirits who wish that they could be here at this time. The return of the Aquarian Age. The time of the white buffalo calf woman's return. The time of the eighth fire of the eighth generation. And I believe that those that understand that life is more than just, oh, Lord, what am I doing here? It's a grind. There's something more. It's not always big, but it's, there's always more. Spirit whispers to us. Whispers to us. Turn right, turn left. Take a look at that, Dana. Have another look at that. Why don't you explore over there? Hey, you know, that woman that's sitting over there, maybe she could use a compliment. When you walk by her, just say something kind about the way that she looks. Say something. Reach out. Send a card. They need that right now. I believe that that's really the simplest way that Spirit speaks to us. The little whispers the little whispers that tell us to reach out, to stop, to pause, to smell the roses, to pick up this book, enter into that course of study. Maybe take a deep breath and not open your mouth in a given moment, but to just be with it, to pray with it. You know, as a Scorpio, as a quadruple Scorpio, sometimes, my, well, it is my greatest challenge, <laughs> um, is to sometimes just, just stop and take a deep breath rather than, you know, let my thoughts come out of my mouth. <laughs> Dana, just take a deep breath. You don't need to say anything about that right now. Facebook isn't the place. Stop. <laughs> don't touch that keyboard, Dana. <laughs> That's spirit speaking to me too. Don't do that. Don't go there. Let that go. Spirit has taught me over, over the years to just turn around and walk away. To not touch the keyboard. To take a deep breath. 
and bear witness. And just bear witness and keep doing the work. Spirit says, just keep doing the work. What is the work that Spirit wants us to do? Well, I think first and foremost to just, you know, be a good human being, since that's what we're doing here on the earth plane at this time. But Spirit will speak to us in those whispers that tell us to stop or go or stand up, because there are plenty of times when I, I will stand up and be the champion of people, particularly children, as you all know, anybody who knows that knows how much time I spend at Gathering Thunder Foundation assisting children. Children um, have a very soft place with me. And I believe from my own beginnings uh, as an adopted child, as actually as a child sold into, right? So children have a very soft place with me. And I spend a lot of time champion, championing children and uh, battered and abused women and men. And sometimes spirit will say to us, just keep going. Just because they don't understand, they think differently than you, their viewpoint is different than you, Dana, just keep going. You ever get that? Jessica is saying, every time I listen to that voice, something beautiful always manifests right on. And yeah, absolutely, Carla Jo, it's not, it's not always easy to shut up or stop the keys from going across the keyboard. But I do. I've learned to. As my cousin Bobby Jean always says, and I love her saying, never show your ass in public. <laughs> I love that. Don't show your ass in public. <laughs> so I try not to show my ass or be an ass in public. <laughs> Some people, whatever, okay. So sometimes the voice says, Dana, remember what Bobby said? Don't show your ass in public. <laughs> and you're right, Jessica. When you listen to the voice, when you listen to the voice, wonderful things happen. I remember my dad, the Sarge said to me one time, Denise Lynn, I don't know how you do it. How do you make these things happen at your foundation? How do you make that happen? I always say, I don't make it happen. I'm an instrument. I sit in prayer a whole lot. I have a magnificent circle of friends who even if they don't believe in what I'm doing specifically, they believe in me and so they'll assist in what I'm doing. And Spirit always says to me, just keep going. Me and my sister Barbara, we have this conversation all the time about the children's home up, up on the reservation. You know, they're growing now into a group home. And sometimes she'll call me and she'll say, I'm on my pity pot. And I'll say, okay, well, how long you been sitting on that pity pot? You got a cup of coffee? What are you doing? Why are you having a moment of pity up there, Barbara? Because I'm so worried about the children. And getting this group home open, we've got all this paperwork we've got to get done. And I'm calling you because I know you're going to say to me, just keep going. <laughs> and I do. Just keep going, Barbara. Just keep going. And when you just keep going, little by little, even if, you know, there are some winds of opposition, because that's true too, isn't it? Sometimes when we are on the precipice of doing something magnificent, there's the push and the pull from spirit. The pushback. Ever have that happen? Just go anyway, Dana. I remember the first time that I went to see my spiritual director, Charmaine. She and I connected yesterday. God, that felt so good. Charmaine at the Dominican Center in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Charm. She's my spiritual director there. And I was driving from the newspaper up Michigan Hill, which is really steep. The newspaper is no longer there on Michigan Hill. It's now Michigan State University Medical Facility. But at that time, going from the newspaper up to the Dominican Center, the convent, my car, which was brand new, a beautiful Buick, died in the middle of Michigan Hill. It just died. <laughs> And I heard Spirit say to me, 
let the car sit for a couple of minutes and it'll start all over again. So I sat there and I knew that there was a push. There was a pushback. And by golly, I gave it a couple of minutes. I gave thanks to whoever it was that was going to help me. And my car started right back up. And up the hill, I went in my brand new car to the Dominican Center. And I met with Charmaine for the first time. And that's really the beginning of the beginning of what was to be next in the evolution of my work. Of my work. And her words, you know, Denise, the Catholic Church has a name for people such as yourself. And after going through all of the testing that you went through, all of the essays and the writings and our conversation, uh, my conversation with others here at the Dominican Center, you're a seer. You are a sensitive, just like the saints of old. The saints and their gifts didn't die during the time when everything went underground. But those gifts are very much alive, and they're alive within you. And in that moment, I looked at her and I said, Charm, do you know that on my way up here, up the hill, from the newspaper to see you, my brand new car died in the middle of Michigan Hill, and she looked at me and she said, funny how it goes that every time somebody is on the verge of what's next, the verge of blossoming, blooming into the next phase or the next understanding or evolution of who they are, sometimes there's a pushback. It happens all the time, she says. And some people will give up at any pushback. Well, I guess I'm not supposed to go, so I guess I'll go home. She said, but you knew better. How did you know better? And I said, because it was that, you know, that little voice from inside that says to you? She said, uh-huh, it told you to keep going, didn't it? And I said, it did. So here I am. Here I am. And at that time, I was, oh my goodness, a 32-year-old mother. 30-year-old mother of two, I should say. Yeah. Hey, Linda Greziak. Good morning, Chua. Hey, Cousin Corey. Good to see you both, Chua Dell. Mihane washte. Yeah, so there I was up at the Dominican Center talking about this very thing. And I remember Charmaine saying to me in the course of all of our getting together as my spiritual director, she said, you know, Denise, the fact of the matter is, is that when we follow the path of our soul, and I know that you're going to follow the path of your soul, we lose a lot of people in our life. Because people don't always understand when we walk the path of our soul. And 22 years later, you know, I hadn't seen her in 22 years, she and I had a wonderful brunch. Her son, Michael, owns the Cherie Inn there in East Town. For those of you that are here in the Grand Rapids area, the Cherie Inn. Oh, my goodness, on Fulton. Magnificent. He goes to market every day. And the cuisine is outstanding. So there, there was Charm and myself having a wonderful catch-up after 20-some years of not seeing one another. And she said, you know, I've been following all of your work. I've been following you very closely. And the only question I have for you is how many people have you lost? Because as I've been watching your work unfold, I've been praying for you because I know a lot of people have probably walked out of your life because they don't understand. But you kept going. And I think that we all can experience that, or that we do, when we follow the voice of our soul. Because others may not understand it, or it may go against their grain. It may challenge their balance, rattle their cages. 
<laughs> and yet spirit says, just keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. Lady Hawk, I missed seeing you because I didn't listen to the right voice. Aw. Yeah, how do we do that? How do we discern which is the right voice? For myself, what I've, I've learned, the right voice, I can feel it in my heart, the right voice. And with it, it brings an emotion. When I know, when I know that I know that I know, there's an emotion that comes with it. And it's right in my heart center. Sometimes it might be in my gut, but typically for me, when spirit speaks to me, there's an emotion that comes with it that touches my heart. Sometimes I'll say to people, that made my heart smile, that made my heart giggle. That's what I mean about that when I say that. That made my heart smile, it made my heart giggle. I can feel it. And sometimes it doesn't even make any sense, does it, Jessica? When we do those things. Ever. And yet we do it. Boy, years ago, 2006. 2006 was when I met uh, Wakian Snamani. He was here in Michigan. Thank you, Linda Griziak, for bringing him here. Uh, Linda, who is uh, an extraordinary teacher, my dear friend Linda, who's, I believe, retired finally from teaching. Hi, Lindy. Uh, brought him here for a production called Thanksgiving, A Native American Perspective. It was wonderful. The superintendent of schools, Northview Public Schools, spoke about true Native American history in this country, or the history of Native American. This, this, it was appalling, let me just say, uh, in so many respects. But Joaquin and many of his members, uh, many members of his family, uh, the drummers, all came there were eight consecutive nights of sweat lodge or NEP, eight nights. And oh my goodness, those were some hot <laughs> sweat lodges. Let me just say, Tara, you were there, you know, too. And I'll never forget him saying to me on the second night, he and Sydney, <coughs> Sydney has no <coughs> horses was there. And Gabriel, good morning. An eagle just flew by. Of course, an eagle just flew by. Okay. And it was a very loud eagle, which made Gabriel react. But anyway, when Joaquin said to me, you know, a uh, white owl woman told me that you would be coming. I was told that you would be coming, and I was told that I was to train you. I was to teach you about these ways. And I looked at him, and I said, you've got to be kidding me. That's what I said to this guy. You've got to be kidding me. And he said, I'm not kidding you. And when spirit speaks to me, I listen. giving Gabriel a bird's eye view of what's going on out in the forest so he can just sit and look at it. He said, no, and when spirit speaks to me, I listen. I said, okay, so what does this mean? He said, well, it's going to, you're, you're, what I'm going to teach you is going to begin tonight. And afterward, I thought to myself, are you crazy? Denise, are you nuts? And Spirit said no. So I asked him later, it was like 2 o'clock in the morning, I said to him, why me? Of all of the people in the world, why me? And he said, Spirit told me that you would be the one and that I was to teach you. And, you know, I know, even though you don't know, but one day you will know who your ancestors are. And your ancestors want you to know these ways. 
And I had many, many dreams after that saying to me, you need to follow this path. And there was a lot of opposition, let me just say. A lot of opposition. And I did it anyway. And the day came that I saw Barbara Dolnife for the first time and Delmarie Dolnife for the first time. Delmarie Dolnife Broadfield for the first time. And I'm so happy that I listened to spirit. And I'm so delighted that spirit spoke to me and that I understood that when spirit speaks, I do listen. And I will consider, it's not like I follow blindly, because there are people who follow blindly. And we need to have discernment. <clears throat> Always discernment. To sit with it, to pray with it, to be with it. And for me, I think that that's part of the beauty of life, is allowing our spirit and our soul to speak. And I believe that our soul and our spirit speaks even when we're not verbally speaking. I think that there are soul connections that speak. And I believe that our soul will tell us so many things that the rational mind cannot possibly grasp in any given moment. Linda, you were there when Barbara Dolnife walked into that restaurant that day. And I looked at Linda and I said, oh my God, I know that woman. And she said, how do you know her? I said, my soul knows her. I know her. My soul knows her. You ever have that? Where you meet somebody, or have I hadn't even met her yet, but your soul says, you know, there's a soul connection. Linda saying, my soul is singing. Yeah. And later that afternoon then, or the following afternoon, Linda and I went to tribal uh, council. Remember that, Lindy? And we gifted Teresa two bulls tribal president. At that time, we wrapped her in a beautiful star quilt. It was a beautiful day. And soul is so wise. Isn't it amazing how soul conspires and spirit conspires? I will be forever amazed and blessed. And I know that it's a state of grace that we encounter at times. <clears throat> Tara saying, I felt that when I first saw you at an IAAP meeting. Absolutely right on, Tara. I mean, Tara, you and I clicked right away. And Linda saying, I said the same thing about Sific, Sific Pretty Hip. Yeah, I mean, you and Sific are like two peas in a pod. Our soul will take us to places <clears throat> when we travel. Our soul will take us to places that our soul has been that the ancestors have been, are sold, if we listen to it, will take us to extraordinary grace-filled places. <clears throat> I have had connections both saying they are here for you and others saying stay away from that person. Oh yeah, spirit will also do that. <laughs> Back your bus up. Don't go there, Dana. Turn right around. You don't need that. Got to listen to that one, too. Sometimes those are the voices that we uh, regret most, isn't it? The ones that say, turn your butt around, <laughs> back up slowly, or run fast. Or what about the voice that says, let go? It's time to let go. It's time to let go maybe of a person, of a job, of a belief system, of a way of being. Let go. Dana, let go. Oh, my.
that can be a really hard one, let go. That can be a process. Sometimes it gets easier with age. Sometimes it doesn't. Let go. Sometimes from the other side, those that we love who have crossed over come to us to speak to us in our dreams. Sometimes we can literally hear them in our head. The voice of our beloved is in our head giving us a bit of advice. A lot of people will ignore that voice, thinking that they're just dreaming it up, but they're not. The great thing about spirit and soul is that it's all connected. It's part of the great weave, as Amantha Murphy says. It's part of the weave, spirit and soul. And I always think of it as like a spider web. And every one of those beautiful strands on the spider web is energetic. And it gives information. And it receives information. And it transmits information. We're part of this great weave. And like the spider there on the... Uh, web on the strands, receiving information and giving information and connecting with others, seen and unseen. When we are awake, when we are aware that that is a possibility, life becomes very magical, literally magical. Some people say charmed. It doesn't mean that bad things or difficult things aren't going to happen. What it means when we are connected to the voice of spirit or the voice of our soul is that maybe then we have something, a go-to, to help us. A go-to so that when we're sitting and we're contemplating or we're in prayer or conversation with God or with ourselves, our higher selves, we have a go-to. That's why I call my company the Temple Within. I like spending time there in the inner temple. I'm not alone there. Lots of allies and angels and beloveds who have gone home, ancestors who have gone home. Dell is saying, Keeping myself sane, I always think, still walking my journey, must move on. Work is done here. Yeah. Donna is saying, ignored that one a few times. Yep, haven't we all? <clears throat> we do. We ignore that. We think the brain is smarter than <laughs> our soul, our spirit, our heart. Our heart does have brain cells in it. And... Um, I spend a lot of time teaching people how to connect the brain cells in their brain to the brain cells in their heart. Making that bridge really helps in talking to spirit and soul. So when we talk to our loved ones, our beloveds who have crossed over, do they hear us? Yes. Yes, they do. Does that include the four-legged kind or the furry and the feathery kind? Yes, that includes them too. Yep. <clears throat> Nothing ever really dies. Energy doesn't die. We know that. It just transforms. It transmutes. So that spiritus, as Sandy Herrick likes to call it, uh, in the indwelling, that spiritus, the spirit that I always say animates us, when it leaves our physical body, it doesn't cease to exist. It just doesn't have this shell flesh and bones, it continues on. And I believe that that is the case for every living thing. That's me. And others like me who, who feel that way. So when we talk to the beloved who has gone home with a capital H, they do hear us. Do they always respond? No. But they do hear, and oftentimes they do respond. They'll give us a sign. Send to us their favorite song. We can ask for a sign. Jeez, the other day, I said to my daddy, Billy King, I said, Daddy, Billy King, I need a sign. I need a positive sign. Could you just, like, give me one that's really big and I'm not going to ignore it? Because <laughs> I can't ignore it. 
And two seconds later, after I said, Daddy, please just give me a sign. Let me know, blah, 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 blah. Put it all out there. What went by, like two inches from the front of my GMC Yukon? <laughs> a great big, gigantic Coca-Cola semi. Well, number one, I am a huge Coca-Cola fan. Don't even try to get me to drink a Pepsi. It ain't happening. I'm a Coca-Cola girl. Coca-Cola comes from the great state of Georgia. And ever since I dreamt about him, almost, well, it is seven years ago, he came to me in my dreams. My sign from him has always been Coca-Cola because it's something that I associate with Georgia. So this great big old semi right down Lincoln Lake Road. <laughs> there it was. And I said, geez, good one. Good one. Thank you, by the way. And probably an hour later, I got the phone call that I was hoping to get. So we can ask for signs. We can say thank you for them. Part of the reason that I, I have this lifetime that I have is that I do see people who have gone home. I've always seen them. I don't know what it's like not to see them. I couldn't tell anybody what it's like. And frankly, for many, many years, I thought everybody could see those that have, had passed. I thought it was just what you did. So there wasn't any need for conversation because isn't this what everybody does? Well, I learned in my teen years that maybe that really wasn't the case and so on and so on. As I'm speaking, my sister Barbara Dullknife is calling. <laughs> and there it is again, that web, right? There it is. It's that web of connectivity from soul to soul through the ether of spirit. The energizer of spirit. Many years ago, I met with well, it wasn't that many years ago. Lori Bruno, the hereditary high priestess uh, at Salem, Massachusetts. And I adore this woman. She is one of the most loving human beings I've ever met. She's always challenged, you know, because of who she is for many reasons. Um, Giordano Bruno. Oh, so Donna, the next time that you're in Rome, if you go there to uh, the plaza, where the flower marketplace is there in Rome, there's a big statue to Giordor Giordano Bruno. And that is Lori's ancestor. And when Todd and I were in uh, Rome, we laid a beautiful bouquet of carnations, which is what we were supposed to put there, um, as a thank you to Lori. And Lori years ago, probably six years ago, I met with her and she looked at me and she said, so have you met your biological family yet? And I said, no, I'm kind of like giving up hope on that, Lori. I'm just, I don't know. And she looked at me and she, she said, as only Lori can, I am telling you right now, not only are you going to find out who your people are, you're going to meet them. Your father came to you in a dream for that reason. He's getting you ready. So I'm telling you, you better be ready. You better be ready because it's going to happen. And when that happens, you call me. You call me. So when Todd and I were in Rome, we called her to let her know <clears throat> that we had placed flowers at the uh, base of the statue dedicated to her ancestor Giordano. And Todd and I talked about that, what she had told me those years before. And lo and behold, in this web of spirit and soul, and thank you, Ancestry.com and 23andMe, right? Then I had DNA in the game. I get a message from Corey Butler and a message from Danielle King Cootie. 
through Facebook, through the internet, through that web. And I called Lori. She said, why are you calling me? I told you this was going to happen. I said, because you told me to call you. She said, oh, that's right. She said, isn't it amazing how souls get together when they're supposed to get together? Everything is always timed beautifully. Dana, everything is in perfect timing. Everything is in perfect motion. We may not understand it, but we have to learn to trust soul and spirit. There's always something going on that we can't really see. And usually we can't see it for ourselves. Listening, talking, conversing, trusting. That's the biggest one right there, I think, is trusting. Trusting what it is that we hear or that we feel. And going with that. And no, not everybody is going to understand it. Led by the Spirit. Spirit led me. I was led by the Spirit. And there are different ways kind of of looking at Spirit. Barbara's getting hold of me to let me know that someone there on the reservation has passed that I know. She just texted me. And so I will put up prayers for that person. Oftentimes, it's interesting to me when spirit speaks to me, whether it's a spirit of somebody that I know or somebody that perhaps I haven't yet met. And I don't think I really talk about this very often. Love and light. Absolutely, Jessica. Love and light. No matter how long someone has existed here on the earth plane, No matter how long it happens to be, whether it's a day or it's a hundred years, there's this pervasive understanding that comes across to me that this human lifetime that we've chosen to experience is so exquisite, joyfully, painfully, passionately exquisite exquisite to the soul, for the experience of our soul. I believe we chose to experience this. Our souls know one another from a very long time ago and without bodies. I believe that. My soul knows your soul. Before bodies, after bodies, without bodies, Your soul and mine, as Ram Dass says, or whomever said that, are old, old friends, dear old friends. And when dear old friends decide to put on bones and flesh and have this earthly experience together, we recognize one another. That's my dear old friend. We've known each other for millennia upon millennia. We've known one another since the beginning. And here we are now. And I'm so glad that we met up for a brief interaction, for a long interaction, for a lifetime. And we will see one another again without flesh and bone. Our souls being long, long dear friends will know each other because we've always known each other. I love that. I am a hugger. That probably sounded kind of random. I am a hugger. And sometimes spirit will say to me, 
That person needs a hug. Sometimes my clients, when they leave a session with me, they will look at me and say, may I hug you? I mean, I'm not like out there randomly hugging people. May I hug you? I hear that all the time. Is it okay if I hug you? <laughs> I really feel like I want to hug you. Is that okay? <laughs> and usually what happens when somebody asks me that question is that spirit will say to me, and as you're hugging them, leave them with this thought or that thought or just hug them. I don't know why, but I just feel like I want to hug you. Would that be okay? Certainly it's okay. Yes. Every morning when I get up, I say, thank you for this day. Every morning, thank you for this day. I'm talking right out loud sometimes. Thank you for this day. It's a beautiful new day. Thank you for this day. Thank you for keeping me on my true soul path. Thank you for the abundance in my life. And thank you for the abundance that continually flows into my life. Thank you. Thank you. And in that moment of connecting, the connection stays open. And I pay attention to it. And I've learned that sometimes when spirit comes along that isn't kind, the voice of unkind spirit, I've learned to just send it away. If it doesn't bring me joy, it doesn't belong with me. If it doesn't bring me peace, it doesn't belong with me. Those spirits, I send them away. I don't give them room in my mind, in my heart. Spirit speaks to us in nature. Our soul loves to be in nature. Even if we have to be sitting in a place that you know has some screening or netting so the mosquitoes aren't enjoying our company. But just to be outdoors, our soul loves that. The sound of music, ceremony, conversation. <clears throat> Nikki Jorgensen is saying, I am not. No, she is not a hugger. I hug her anyway, don't I, Nikki? <laughs> I hug you anyway because we're dear friends. <laughs> so I, I make her do it. You're going to hug me no matter what. Sorry. <laughs> oh, goodness. It's amazing for people that are not huggers. Because maybe they grew up in a household where hugging just didn't happen. Um, one of Dane's friends grew up in a household where there was no hugging. And Dane grew up in my household, so there's hugging. And the friend, at first when I met the friend, well, you know, of course they got a hug. Well, now the friend is the first to stand up and give a hug. And the friend said to Dane, I didn't know that I was going to like being hugged. We didn't hug. We didn't do that. It's nice. <laughs> It's nice. It's okay. I'm going against the grain. It's kind of scary, but it's okay. Remember, Corey? Yeah, Tara. Tara's a good <laughs> hugger. Aunt Dane's friend got right up straight away and hugged Corey. He walked right in. It was beautiful. It was a, it was a wonderful moment. Because in that hug, there's an exchange of information. In laughter, there's an exchange of information. Listen to the voice of spirit. I think that that's really what I'm here. At least listen to the voice of your soul. You have one. 
It's connected to the creator. It's connected to me. It's connected to every living thing, your soul. It's part of the great weave, the net of life, that web. Give it room to speak. If you've not ever taken a moment just to sit with your soul. How do you do that anyway? Some people say, well, what do you, what? Well, just sit with yourself quietly. Turn off the racket, put away the iPad. And just sit, go out in nature and observe. Be awake, be aware. It may not be that your soul is going to have a great big long litany of stuff to tell you. The first place to begin is with silence and being awake and aware. How often are you even aware of the room that you're right now sitting in? Being awake and aware to the room you're in. Silently observing it. Going outdoors. And being silent and becoming aware of the trees, of the sounds, the flowers. Don't worry if there are weeds that need to be picked. Just become aware of the space that you're in. Take a moment to feel your body. To feel your toes, to feel your kneecaps. The first step to listening to the voice of your soul is to become aware and awake to the nuances. And the more that we become awake and aware of everything that's around us, the unseen begins to be seen. The unseen begins to be heard and felt. The more that we're aware of our physical body, our non-physical energetic body becomes awake and aware to the non-physical world. Gradually, step by step, we become awake and aware. Our heart becomes awake and aware. And for me, that's the litmus test. How do I feel it in my heart? If there's no feels, there's no deals, right? (laughs) Corey. Yeah, Corey's a hugger. Good thing. But then she's my cousin, so I'm pretty sure I come from a long line of huggers on both sides. A lot of hugging going on. I love that. Yeah. I often feel you hugging me from a distance. You know that's right, Linda. You know that's right. And you're going to get through all this, too. You're going to get through all of it. And you'll be up here next June for the Ancestral Weekend Workshops, the Retreat Weekend. Jessica, I love the meditation, present moment, only moment. Where can can people get that, Jessica? Is there um, an outlet for that or a place where people can get a hold of that? Yeah, being present in the now is wonderful. Not dialing too back far back in history, not projecting too much forward, because that's where things get wonky when we're walking too much in the past of our past experiences. I'm not talking about ancestors. I'm talking about our own past. Worrying about the future, being present, being awake, and being aware. It's a wonderful way to go. Spirit speaks in signs. And wonders. It isn't always a Coca-Cola semi. <laughs> For me, it was. It is. And whenever I need advice from my Aunt Mary Lou, 
by golly, the song Crazy by Patsy Cline comes on. Doesn't matter what time of the day or evening, Patsy Cline comes on. Mm -hmm. We have to listen. We have to tell sometimes the spirit of fear. Fear has a spirit. I'm telling the spirit of fear to step aside. I need a moment of clarity. I'm asking the spirit of anxiety to step aside. I need a moment of clarity. Everything has a spirit, including anxiety, including fear, including illness. There's a spirit attached to everything. Sometimes we just need to say, step aside. I need some clarity. You're clouding me right now with all that. Step aside. It comes from the work of Thich Nhat Hanh. Thank you for that. Love the work of Thich Nhat Hanh. And Marianne, you said that your brother came to you in a dream. Yes, our relatives love to come in dreams. They love to come in dreams. And sometimes even relatives who are alive will be present in our dreams or friends that are alive will come to us in our dreams. Because, again, that web, that weave, it's magnetic, it's electronic, it's alive. And if our souls can't meet on the physical plane, our souls will meet in the non-physical realms. When somebody says to me, geez, Dana, you came to me in my dreams last night. Oh, Sometimes I'm very well aware of that. Sometimes I'm not. Well, tell me, what were we doing? What did we talk about? When we pray for somebody or we go into prayer for somebody, we are connecting with them on that beautiful weave, on those strands, the strand that leads from our heart to theirs. That's part of the weave. And that's the power of prayer, of contemplation, of intent. We go right there. Isn't that wonderful? Sometimes we can feel when somebody is thinking of us. I can feel that anyway. If somebody is thinking of me, they'll pop right into my mind. Yep, sometimes we do have to listen to hopelessness and despair. I'm not saying dismiss it entirely, but I am saying sometimes we need to ask that to step aside. Ask it to step aside if we don't listen to all of it. Right? They have voices to listen to as well, Rob, yeah. But sometimes we need to ask those to step aside to get clarity about something because sometimes we can become so shrouded in despair and hopelessness. So shrouded in the spirit of that, that's, that's all we have. We can't see beyond that. And sometimes we need to be able to see beyond it and we can say, can you step aside? I need to see some clarity about. All of our emotions are valid. Sometimes they all need to be worked through. And sometimes in order to work through them, the crowd can be so thick we need to ask some to step aside. Or maybe we need somebody else to see the trees in the forest for us because they become so thick with. Well, and for sometimes it is the only way out is through. And sometimes people get stuck in the middle and they end their own life. And maybe for them that's their through. My brother came to me in a dream. I was at the beach reaching for a shell in the water. He helped me open it to photograph it. It opened and had a peacock feather inside. Oh, that's beautiful, Marianne. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, sometimes we do need to ask the voices of negativity to step aside. Sometimes we just do. Sometimes we have what it takes to get through, and sometimes sometimes we just need to have a break and pick it up in increments. 
Some people can blast all the way through the dark night of the soul, and some people need to take it in pieces. And that's okay, whatever works, however it is that your soul manages to get through. And sometimes we need assistance on the physical plane as well as the non-physical plane. Not everything in the universe is positive. There's plenty of negative. Trust me, in my, in my work as a seer, I see a whole lot of the hopelessness, of the despair. I see a whole lot of grief. And I also see, on the opposite end of that, a whole lot of joy, passion, beauty, grace. And sometimes it is in the darkest places that we find the light of grace. Sometimes it is in the darkest places that we find our passion. Sometimes it is in the darkest of places that we finally realize the brightness of our own light. We all go through the Garden of Gethsemane, our own personal Garden of Gethsemane. And sometimes that is where we find our compass where we find our light, our passion, our strength, our courage. The light from within. And then there are those that never make it out of the garden and those that step into the garden and back out and back in and back out and back in. It's a process. Life is pretty extraordinary. It's pretty exquisite. Painfully exquisite. Painfully joyful. Painfully passionate. Good pain. Bad pain. It's just exquisite. And in the end, each of us faces a brand new beginning. Yes, sometimes balance is difficult to maintain. It sure is. Sometimes people have experienced things in this human lifetime that are so dark and so full of despair that finding the balance is done in fits and starts, pauses, respite, go back in again. Sometimes it's from other lifetimes, I believe. And they go in and they come back out and rest. And they go back in and they come back out and rest. Soul retrieval. There's an interesting topic, retrieving pieces of the soul. I guess that's probably for a whole other show, isn't it? With that, everybody, rest gently with your soul today. Take a moment to be mindfully, consciously awake and aware of your physical body, of your surroundings. Take a look. I'm always amazed coming home from somewhere that I see a home or a farm or somebody that I've never seen before, and it's been there all along. All along. Your soul has been there all along. The more that the seer begins to see, all that is unseen or to be seen begins to be available to be seen by the seer. Layers and layers, peeling away the layers, being observant to the physical surroundings. Pretty soon we become observant to the unseen surroundings and they become, it becomes observant of us. <laughs> You're welcome, Rob. Thank you, everybody. Have a beautiful day. Get out there and shine as only you can shine. Spend a little time with your soul and your spirit today. Blessings be everybody.